Oh, and welcome. Today we are going to touch on a very, very, very interesting topic. So the idea is uh, reconciliation in UCMDB, which sounds not like much, but uh, yeah, it's, let's say, sometimes easy to do, sometimes hard to do, but hard to understand. But then once you get it, it just it just works. So what reconciliation means is when a new CI is introduced to UCMDB, it's going to ask itself a couple of questions in order to determine, is it a new CI or is it an existing CI? And hence, would it create a new CI or would it just look at the current CI and say, well, you know, it already exists, I'm not going to do anything, or is it exist, but I'm going to slightly modify it. Okay, this is the reconciliation process. This is all it does. But the way it works, well, it's a little bit more complicated. But uh, you know what? Once you get used to it, it's very logical and very much likable. So let's see what is the issue at hand. We will go to OBM's workspace over here and we'll say, you know what, event perspective. And this is actually very important. Now when you have, now when you have Docker, everywhere. Uh, containers can be spun up and down according to whatever needs there, there are, but uh, the same container might, cre might create a duplication of its own CIs here and there. And this is, this is exactly what happened to us over here. So in general, what we got, uh, we got a lot of duplication on the uh, OMI itself or, or, or OBM itself. Because, well, from its perspective, I mean, it just spins. Uh, this is how Docker works. You know, it spins a, a container when it remediates itself or whatever. And then uh, it gets some new attributes. And those attributes, they come into recon reconciliation process. And it says, well, you know what? I'm not going to delete anything. It's, it's dangerous, right? I'm going to create a completely new CI. And this is what happened. And we have the, the same situation over here with another container over the whole item platform, which is uh, completely understandable. I mean, those are agents and agents provide uh, this kind of data automatically and it's up to the UCMDB server to decide uh, what's going wrong with it, right? Or at least uh, it's up to OBM to decide. So this is exactly what we're going to do. We are going to address the issue of this container duplication so it wouldn't happen again. How do we do that? First, we open the local UCMDB browser. Okay, UCMDB client, and just spin it up, get some details inside it. Nothing really, not, nothing too much complicated, right? So we have the OBM, yes, continue. And it's going to be something among those lines, right? Just a normal login process. And yeah, let's see. So actually for uh, this portion, we're going to test it on our screens. But this one, we're just going to merge it manually. And we will know that in the future, it wouldn't duplicate itself, right? OK, so let's open it on a full screen. All right, there it is. And we will do a couple of things. First of all, we would like to see our CIs clearly. And also, I forgot to copy paste the details of the CIs that I'm going to alter. So yeah, uh, let's select the proper CIs. We want just the node. You know what? Let's select everything and then unselect everything. Oh, come on, unselect everything. Yeah, now it's thinking. Okay, cool. Okay, and now in order to mark only the node, just type its name and it will appear over here. So, okay. And uh, I think it was broker and something else, right? So, let's see. Yes, item collect dance once data. So we're going to run a notepad over here. Oh, that's just too big, right? I'm going to do it like this. So this is one of the duplicate CIs. And we know that uh, we need to copy its name. The other one is pretty easy to remember, so it's completely fine. OK, cool. 
So now we'll go to the CI type manager. Yeah, and we're going to find our node. Oh, come on, managed object, node. Node, where are you? There is node, yeah. And it is selected, so we have plenty of those. We go to details, and here is the identification. So reconciliation deals with identification. And identification has three parts to it. We're not going to go too deep into this, but you need to know that it has the first step of verifying is the new CI actually sharing the, its properties with the existing CIs in general? Because, well, if it doesn't, why spend machine time on verifying the other portions of it? And then in the second part, so it's a identification criteria, right? So it says, well, if you have something among those lines and you say, well, yes, I do have similarity of an IP address, then says, oh, well, you might have a duplicate. But if all of those identification criteria say, well, you know what? Uh, I, I don't have any of those things. It would say, well, you know what? Uh, then you don't have a duplicate. Let's just create you, right? So it kind of saves time. So there is... This is the identification criteria. Then we have this porch participant number two, which is much and much separated into two sections. One of them is trying to prove that this CI that we just met and it has some shared parameters with existing ones. It just wants to say, well, you know what, but you are a different guy. I mean, look at that. It's not the same as I have. So, you know, the other ones don't have what you have. So you are a new guy, right? So it's just removes it and then the last portion is uh, validation criteria so first it was identification criteria then it goes to a criterion sorry then it goes to verification criteria which has criterions and then it has validation criteria which has criterions right and this one does a couple of things simultaneously like previous ones it tries to find some other uh, differences but also it tries to verify to a certain point where the previous verifications right or wrong right because well it's either or if they were wrong we can expand on that and those the most verifications are done over here but if they were right well at least i'm going to create the ci eventually so it kind of uh, a gives the functionality of both previous steps in, in a sense. Not, not exactly, but we're not, we don't need to know more than that. Okay, fantastic. So what we're going to do, we're just going to say, you know what? I already know what I'm going to exclude. And this is very important. So Node is the most complex CI there is. The most complex CI there is, right? It took years to find out how it should be defined. And yeah, I know, and everybody are struggling with this. But in our situation, we know exactly what we're going to exclude, and we know that it's going to be very, very, very unique in terms of CIs. So we don't care much. We are going to do our reconciliation. And how it's done? Well, we will gonna, we're going to steal and change. We're going to change specifically validation criteria. So we take the validation criterion of some sort. We go Control C. We enter, we paste it once more, and we make it a little bit more beautiful, although it's not important for XML. I mean, it's, uh, it was never intended to be read by humans, right? But yeah, but still we would like to, we would like to be a little bit careful about this. And then we're gonna say, well, the attribute name that we are going to be focusing on is name, lowercase name. Okay, equal ignore case, yes, completely fantastic. Now, before this uh, validation criterion ends, we need to add a couple of items. And the items are include only. And then we're going to provide the value, which is going to be the copy paste that we did earlier. So this is going to be number one, right? Value. 
Oh, come on. They're, they're, this is how mistakes are made. Right. And then we are going to close this tab properly. So, so this is value number one. We have value number two. So it's going to be OMI dash zero. And we're going to close the value. And we are going to close our include only. Like this. Now we have a syntax problem on line 134. Invalid content was found starting with element. One of attribute conditions connected to CI conditions are expected. So, why is it? And it's a pretty simple reason. So, we have an attribute condition which has the include only value. But if you look at it closely, you see that we actually closed this tag. And the include only doesn't belong to anything. It sits on the same level as this one. So this is why it's so important. So we are going to close it properly. So properly it means with this one. And we are going to use this tag attribute dash condition. Right? Close it. Oh, valid. Very good. So okay. So it's time to test it. So here's an interesting thing. Oh, where is save? Yes, please save. Yes. So it says that the effect is taken immediately. It's not taken immediately, not at all. And uh, what it, it, the thing is that reconciliation doesn't happen all the time. It would just, you know, Bitcoin mine your server or something. No, it's just going to overload it too much, right? And it happens only when a new CI is introduced. So as we said earlier, we can test it on that one. We cannot test it on OB, on OBM because I don't want to reboot this big of a container for entertainment purposes, right? So what we're going to do? Well, we are going to exit first to our file system. Let's clear it a little bit. And then we will remove a pod. All right, so this is what's going to happen. Our name of the pod was data broker or something. Yes, this is the one. And we need to delete it. So it's gonna be cube CTL delete pods. And then it's gonna be collect one data broker, which is not being used really which is very convenient for us, right? And we're gonna say in the namespace of ops bridge, because always specify namespace, even if you have enough pods just to fill one page, why not, right? Oh, dealt, uh, yes. Did you mean delete? I did mean to delete, yes. Yes, please. Let's go and modify, delete, go for it, delete it. So, don't worry, deleting pods is completely normal. There we go. It is actually initializing a new one, but also what it's going to do, this new pod would have an agent inside. And this agent, this agent is going to trigger a reconciliation process because when the agent performs a startup, it would try to deliver its own discovery data to the nearest uh, RTSM. No, just kidding, not to the nearest, but the one that it is authorized to connect to, which is our OBM over here. So a couple of refreshes from now, all of those would be merged. And look what happened. It actually performed the reconciliation on all of the nodes. I didn't know that, so I read help files and you are learning together. So OMI zero and the item collect that data, data broker were all reconciliated. And now they'll have a ton of duplicate CIs of another sort 
interfaces and everything else, but they are not interfering with our job because since they have unique values, nothing else would actually try to work with this data. So it's completely fine. Although ADCI would look a little bit cringy at times. Uh, just look at that. Look at that. Look at, look, look, look what happens. But at least when you go to OBM, it's gonna look a little bit cleaner. I'm not sure if it's very, yeah, yeah, it's very good. So we just gonna have the, oh no, no, this is not how we take a screenshot. This is how we take a screenshot. Okay, this is how we take a screenshot. Yeah, okay. We took a screenshot, very good. And that is for today friends so i hope you like this uh, i it's a very very cool feature i mean i really enjoy looking at it it's very satisfying because you're touching something that big and you know what you survive it so very good so see you in the next one